The following podcast is a next level production. You're going to have to uh, change the way you live your life now. Avoid stressful situations, stay away from people. I can't stay away from people. How am I supposed to do my job? You, you can't go back to your job. You stay here until you, you figure out how to control your Hulk self. Well, how long is that going to take? This is a multi-year journey you're about to embark on, on coming to terms with being old. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about She-Hulk Attorney at Law Season 1, Episode 1. So, Steve, want to give us that uh, synopsis that we got? Sure. Absolutely. The, the title of this one is A Normal Amount of Rage, and the synopsis is short and sweet. Jen Walter's world is turned upside down after a freak accident leaves her with superpowers. Very short, very sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, what we got out of this literally is a uh, definitely an origin story of mm -hmm. how she got those powers, how she was trained, and where she's at. Now, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are not aware of She-Hulk itself. They've only known it from the comics when she was in certain comics here and there. She was uh, a fourth member of the Fantastic Four when Ben Grimm, the Thing, actually stepped away from the Fantastic Four and she filled in his slot. And she was there for about a good 20 issues. And that was uh, John Byrne's run. And Dan Slott did his own version of She-Hulk or the Sensational She-Hulk. I'm forgetting which, but there was one that was called She-Hulk and there was one called Sensational She-Hulk. And the character itself has been very different in comparison to most. Now, mind you, before there was Deadpool, there was She-Hulk, and she did break the fourth wall when it came to the comics. So she did actually speak out to the, the audience as you were reading a comic, or she would rip a panel and say, I'm not happy with that scenario, so we're going to go on to the next one <laughs> and then take off from the story from there. So the, the character itself is kind of tongue-in-cheek for the most part. But she is very prominent in the Marvel comics. Uh, she did get her powers, yes, from her cousin Bruce Banner. In the comics, it's a little different. And we'll talk about that as we talk about the episode. Because this is an origin episode. And uh, to start off with like uh, the initial, like my initial thoughts, I thought it was pretty cool how she starts off at breaking that fourth wall and introducing herself. And apparently she already had her powers at a certain point from like, what, two or three months before. And then she's back in the courtrooms doing what she normally does. And I think it's great that we we get that. And then we we get the whole story of how she obtained her powers, how she was trained and what she did when she went on from there. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it was really good. I love the humor. I love the slightly adult content. Like it was like <laughs> bordering on that line of adult content. And we'll talk some more about that later. But uh, yeah, it was it was really really cool the way. And I'll, I'll admit, you just you just talking about that. And I have I broke I listed out the breaking of the fourth wall moments uh, in in part of my notes. But it it just occurred to me that it never it never blew the. Um, the tension for me about her returning to her life as an attorney, mm. knowing that she returns to her life as an attorney, you know, like, I don't like, it didn't dawn on me until just now that that, that didn't even, that didn't bother me during the episode that, oh, well, we know what the end result is going to be. She is going to get back to her attorney career. It never dawned on me until you just now were talking about it, that we knew through the whole, every time she's talking about wanting to come back and be a lawyer, we could have just gone, well, we know she's going to be there. Why are they telling us? Why are they showing us this? But I, so I didn't have that. So I really, I, it, that's a good thing for the story that they, they, that break of the fourth wall introducing the origin story was a great way to suck me in to where I'm invested in. Is she going to get back? Is, is he going to, is she going to figure out how to use this? And it was so, yeah, that was really, really cool that I realized that, that I did have the tension of, you know, is she going to be able to transform? What's going to happen? I, I didn't, uh, I didn't lose that tension because of that opening introduction. Yeah, which is pretty cool because the Dan Slott version or his uh, run of She-Hulk, she 
addressed and was consistently She-Hulk form, but Jennifer Walters always announced herself as Jennifer Walters, even though she was She-Hulk in this mm-hmm. big suit, big tall green person in the courtroom. So she just uh, stayed as Hulk. She stayed that, right? as She-Hulk. There was huh. times where she would be consistently in the She-Hulk form, and she did that in the Fantastic Four. She wasn't able to transform back. And then in this case, within this particular show, from what we could tell, she's able to willingly change to and from Mm -hmm. that form and retain her consciousness because the initial run of She-Hulk, and to give you like a little brief story of the reasoning why we got She-Hulk, the comic came out right around the time that the uh, Bill Bigsby, Lou Ferrigno TV series was around. And it was their way of uh, pretty much marketing on that because, well, they had sold their rights to Universal, uh, Marvel at that time. So this was Stan Lee's, I think he was involved within the first three issues. And then, all right, so it it was called the Savage She-Hulk. So in the very beginning of that particular run, she was not able to uh, control her powers. She would only get them through anger, just like with Bruce and his powers. Mm. So she would get angry or some sort of emotional thing will cause her to trigger and turn into She-Hulk. And she wouldn't remember a lot of things of what happened when she was in She-Hulk form. Hmm. So to to give like a little brief of that, and then later on during the runs, she was able to control her powers, go from Jen to She-Hulk. And then by, uh, I believe, Sensational She-Hulk, she was just literally in full She-Hulk form, just like in the Fantastic Four run. 275 was one issue that I enjoyed most because it was literally Stanley in the front of the the cover saying, what is seven foot tall green and has a staple in her navel? And it was literally because she was uh, sunbathing nude on the top of the Baxter building. And there was uh, and the whole story revolves around them because the paparazzi was out there taking pictures. So she was put into Playboy or something. And uh, that was the whole, uh, and that was at a time when Marvel was trying to get a little more like adult oriented within the comics itself. But you didn't really see anything, honestly. It was one of those things where they were just trying to get it. So it's like, oh, this is controversial. And Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it for the fact that I was like, oh, okay. They're they're kind of popularizing her. And and actually within the comic itself, she goes a little bit, (laughs) a little crazy and goes off and attacks the the paparazzi and everything else. And then uses her legalese to stop it. Because, you know, not only was she uh, a lawyer, but she was part of the Fantastic Four. But... She was very prominent. Uh, There are other alternate versions because there was, if you remember, uh, Logan, the run Logan, like the movie was based after, which was in an alternate universe uh, in this case. Uh, Bruce and her, of all things, had children (laughs) and and they had like really weird offspring. So we had various versions, but I think with they they topped off on Dan Slott's and John Byrne's run, combining them both and making it work for this particular show. And I really enjoy that for the fact that, you know, it's got that campiness and fun in it, the breaking of the fourth wall. And there are just regular jokes uh, as, as we see in the promos uh, about how, uh, you know, when she's talking to from Dr. Strange, uh, he uh, he goes, oh, the Book of Ashanti? She goes, no, the Book of the Law. <laughs> so, uh, oh, so, is that in one of the trailers? I have not watched all the trailers yeah. and stuff yet, so, so I, but, I, yeah. I didn't want to get spoiled. I got spoiled about too much watching not, the trailers no, already. Wong, so. Wong apparently makes an appearance, but oh, okay. these are sort of like little quick jokes within it about legal, a lot about... I think they're probably going to run it to the in the sense of where she has to represent people of powers that are showing up, people who are uh, gifted in some way that have issues. And I think that's why we do see snippets of uh, Emil Bron- uh, Blonsky, who Emil Blonsky, who is uh, the Abomination. Uh, there, there have been teases that Daredevil will be in it because we all know that Matt Murdock is a lawyer. So uh, I'm still, I'm looking forward to what we get for the rest. We only have five more ish- episodes. I say issues, but five more episodes of this. And Is it, I, th- I think it, no, I think it's a longer, I think it's a longer run. At least IMDB has it listed as, hold on. Cause I, I just looked at this the other day. 
Oh, and really? It's going to be longer s- than six episodes. I I believe because uh, let me double check because I'm yeah nine. It's nine. IMDb. IMDb has it slotted for nine episodes. Has it running through October thirteenth? Wow. So I, okay. I don't know. I don't know what that means for the length of time of the episodes. Well, considering this one was you only know, about thirty-seven minutes, but mm-hmm. it was very entertaining. It goes by fast. Yeah, and we do get a lot of information within. So with that, let's just move into our our, our highlights or or our top fives or points of interest within She Hulk. Sure. Uh, I loved I loved the moment when we first see her after she wakes up uh, after after mixing the blood with with Bruce and she goes to that club and she's all disheveled and you know her her uh, her shirt is tore and her pants and those girls see her in the bathroom and they're just like honey we need to take care of you and they're all like doing her makeup and she's like I don't need you to do my makeup and they're like, no you need we need to do your makeup and then who brings extra shoes to the club is that That's a good question is I, that a thing because the, the the girl goes oh i've got i've got you need some this is a public bathroom here here i've got extra or i've got a pair or something like that and i'm like <laughs> what who brings extra shoes so I, I loved it and it wasn't until the second watch that i realized because the, the first watch i must have blinked and missed it because i was like wait did she just growl at those guys and she left but no you see a quick snip of hulk uh, basically jumping in and grabbing her before she is able to attack those guys who are accosting her outside the the bar. There's a real quick, you see a blur, basically, of what this huge blur that grabs her and takes her away. And then we go to the next scene of her waking up in Mexico in Bruce's uh, Mexican uh, Fortress of Solitude. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is a good question about the clubs and the shoes. I, I, I'm curious, but only a woman could actually answer that question. <laughs> yeah, maybe a woman out there who listens can tell us, do you bring extra shoes because you expect you're going to lose your shoes? I don't know. Well, well, uh, maybe in their car or, you know, if they have a big purse, maybe because, you know, think about it. We as men don't wear high heels and that is killer in the feet. Yeah. Uh, so from maybe, what I'm told by a lot of women. Maybe yeah, that's what it was. You have I don't a, know. a pair of at least comfortable shoes, you know, I guess. Um, I already brought it up as far as like uh, the whole origin. That was my big thing. Is the it's a whole origin story. Mm-hmm. Uh, the difference between the comic and the show is uh, the way she obtains her powers. So in the comic, in the first one, the very first one that came out in the late seventies, early eighties, literally was she was like representing somebody and she gets shot, but Bruce is there. But he winds up giving her a blood transfusion, and then he just up and leaves. He doesn't even show her how to use her powers or anything. He just thinks she's but, okay. But he's always he was always on the run from the law at that yeah. point. And in this case, it was pretty interesting how it's like, you know, they make it very much aware. Like, he's like, Jen, get off. I'm bleeding. Don't get near me. I'm bleeding. So that's the very first time in the cinematic or in the MCU that we see Bruce really concerned about blood, his blood infecting others. And she gets that cut and then she gets it on there mm-hmm. and, and, and yeah, I was, bloodstream. I was curious about that because I listened to, to Greg and Penny introduce their, how they're going to do their podcast on it. And she mentions that it was a blood transfusion in the comics and that he just up is, and leaves. And I'm like, was he, is he aware in the comics? Cause like here, like you just said, he's aware that something they, he, his blood can't mix with other people's blood. Yeah. He's aware of it. Um, I wonder if in the comics, maybe he wasn't aware of it. And that's why he just up and, and leaves and doesn't wait to see what the effects are. I don't know. Yeah, I think the idea and the kind of reasoning within the comics, he thought, well, uh, she probably can't get my powers or whatever, but we have mm-hmm. the same blood type. And it was one of those things okay. where he rushed it and then he up and bounced because the cops were on his tail. Very like okay. in the uh, Ferrigno Bigsby show where he was always on the run. So mm-hmm. he up and left. But in this case, the way the accident happened, I thought it was pretty cool because it was a Sicarian ship. And Bruce mentions it when he's got her and he's there to test her about her powers and things of that nature. And yeah, this was my next this was actually my next my next point was this kind of throwaway line mm-hmm. uh, where he just says, oh, yeah, it was a Sicarian courier craft. I'm going to have to deal with that at some point. Yeah. And then we just and then we just move on. And and there's no other on. reference. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know if that's going to be referenced later in something else. Oh, if, there, like you've been, it's a setup, definitely, because you've been talking about Secret Wars. You've been talking about um, the 
What's the invasion? The invasion one you've uh, been talking about? Secret invasion is about Secret the scrolls. Invasion. Okay, so I don't know. I'm just saying that, that obviously that's a setup for something. It, it's definitely not going to have this. Yeah, they they've been working on rights. Um, Disney Marvel have been working on the rights of trying to get uh, World War Hulk, or uh, there was another Hulk run where it's like Hulk just basically destroys the universe. Because in the comic books, uh, Sakar is where he gets banished to on Earth from Earth by Reed Richards and a lot of people from the Illuminati because they see as the Hulk being very dangerous. So oh, they okay. banish so it's, him. It's, it's a setup or something. It's a setup. Unlike what we got in Age of Ultron where Bruce kind of gets taken away by uh, Quinjet and he flies off and then he's on uh, that other planet. And the, then he's the collector. That's where the, the collector, collector is, him, right? and everything yeah. else. But in in this case, in the comics, he becomes very much like a king of his own planet. Gets married, mm -hmm. has children, and uh, he has a son named Scar. But that's the comic. In this case, the MC is changing it completely. I'm pretty sure they're setting us up where he gets either taken back to Sakar for some reason, and they need him, or he did wind up having a kid. Who knows? Maybe that's why uh, the Sakarian ship is there. But he, they did. It was kind of like, oh, well, we got this ship. <laughs> and it's like, I'll deal with that later. And then he was yeah. more concerned of getting Jen on the uh, the road of learning how to use her powers. But I, I like how they kind of make that direction within the show very similar to the Bixby uh, Ferrignum show, where you do see Jen and him when they hulk out in the very beginning when she transforms for the first time and when bruce transforms after the accident just happens how it looks very much like how bill bixby used to where it gets angry and look and we haven't seen that from the ruffalo hulk version at all for a long long time so yeah that's a good catch i didn't i didn't catch that but now that you now that you say that i go yeah it is very the the the, the way they filmed it the, the and did the special effect on that was very close to the night the old the old tv show yeah and i really like that element within it Plus, I, I love uh, when they, she does wake up, he's there, and he's already ready to test her about yeah. her powers. And it's funny to see her, see Tatiana Maslany standing next to this fake Hulk, and she looks like a little kid. And then every time I saw the teaser trailers for months before the show actually showed up, I'm like, was she like a little kid at the time when she <laughs> did this? And I'm like, oh, wait, that is her. Oh, my God, he is just that tall. And it makes mm -hmm. me think, how tall is Tatiana Maslany? Because Hulk, in this case, is supposed to be about maybe eight, nine feet tall at most. And she towers in between six, seven, and seven foot in the show. Yeah, that's what the, the synopsis for the show says. She's six foot seven as Hulk. But let me see. I'll tell you how tall Tatiana Maslany is. Yeah. Because um, I think it's pretty according funny. To, according to IMDb, she is five foot four. Okay. So, so if if when he's in Hulk form, he's almost three feet taller yeah. than her, yeah. almost, almost. So yeah, <laughs> so he would be he would be kind of if if he is eight feet, I, he he looked to be like he was bigger than eight feet. Same he, here. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I loved. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. I was like, uh, oh, I'm pretty sure both of us just love the uh, training montage. But within that scene, when he first puts her in there and she's like freaking out because you're trying to kill me. It's like then she does Hulk out and she gets raged. And because it's like triggering anger and feelings of that nature to get her out, he realizes like, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold. Shut the front yeah. door. You you wait. You're Jen. Yeah. Yeah. I love that <laughs> moment when, when he's when he's like when he's like he's like, go this way. And she's like, why are you trying to hurt me like a stray horse? And he just stops and goes. Wait a minute. You can talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Kind of thing. It, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. I was. I love that whole that she's a better Hulk when he's explaining to her about about how how he got her blood and he was able to heal his arm. Yes. And and she's like, so I'm a better Hulk. And he's like, he's like, no, no, you're just different. And she's like, which is better. <laughs> yeah. I love they almost have like a sibling rivalry. Obviously, these are two cousins who know each other very well. Obviously, we, they don't, you know, they don't tell us it, it was it was one it was the one one little criticism I'll give of of the show. It, it didn't it just bothered me for a minute uh in the second watch was she goes off on him about how he doesn't spend any time with family, he's this, he's that, yes. he's all these all these nasty things, as he says, but then the the show started with them on a road trip to somewhere 
coming from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So obviously he spent some time, you know, it just didn't, it just didn't connect for me when she's like, you don't, you don't spend any time, but yet the, the show starts with them on a road trip together. Yes. You know? So, yeah. And especially, but yeah, I, I love, no, I was yeah. going to say about the, the chopsticks with the Cheetos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had that in my notes. I, that was, and I love that effect when, and you saw it in the one trailer when it showed the car accident. You see them flying up in the air. You see the chopsticks, and you see the Cheetos, <laughs> and it's just a great. It was a great effect, even though it's a horrible moment in, in the show. But yeah, I love that training, that training montage. I love the whole yoga breathing thing. And she's, she's like, I thought it was to get tight, get a tight butt, and hold your farts in. And she's like up top, and he's just like, this is not a joke. Like he's, yeah. he's not. He's not having it. So I thought that was great. I love the whole clapping. Uh, oh, that's later. That's that's later. That's during the fight. But um, I, the only the only other thing that that got me kind of like the, the burping scene was a little <laughs> bit too much for me. <laughs> too adolescent. I mean, I like I, I like some juvenile type humor Same here, sometimes, but, but that was burping, a little bit was like burping, uh, after after the first one, it was just like oh okay, <laughs> yeah. The, the the burping was, but yeah, the rest of the training when like he's he's like you got to have balance, and he's like showing her he's balancing on one hand, and she like does all these flips and tricks and and spins and stuff and then comes down where she's got one leg out and the other one is like cocked and he's just like okay you're just showing off yeah <laughs> yeah well you can see is like, like he, he's like really annoyed because she's taking it like to, a duck to water and he he had to learn for so many years 15 years he says yeah and then that was whole whole issue was like i have to keep i have to get back i have a job i want to do what i love which is law yeah and i finally got my own office i have my own job that i could actually you know do law in front of and he's like no you can't you're a superhero now you gotta deal with this and she goes yeah but look at you you're you're on an island or whatever by yourself away from everybody you want me to be like you and not have anything no so and it was the constant thing throughout the 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 story plot throughout the whole episode is that she wants Mm -hmm. to get back because yeah. she worked so hard for all these years to be a, a great lawyer. And it's typical of a man to say, no, you can't do that. And she kind of basically teaches him that, yeah, she could do this. Because he, she doesn't have the issue that he has where for years he had that other person to contend mm-hmm. with. And he had a whole book. And he's just ripping out chapters as they go because she's already broken all those barriers. Yeah, I love that that moment because that, that part when he rips out the book he goes, well, I guess we don't need this part, but we still need to figure out what triggers you. And then, you know, cuts to them in back in their sitting position, their their yoga, where she starts to get mad and she hulks out. And he goes, see, you're hulking out right now. And she goes, yeah, but I did it at will. And then she goes right back to being Jen. And I, I love the effect they they're using for that because it's it's so cool yes. that uh, j- just to see that her 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 being able to change at will is and then change back like that's one thing that we almost I don't think we've ever seen that from the Ruffalo Hulk. The only time ever. we him, saw him change too was after at the in the original Avengers as he slowly turns into Hulk mm-hmm. because. Captain America goes, uh, Mr. Banner, Dr. Banner, you have to, uh, you need to change soon. And he goes, he goes, well, that's my secret, Cap. Captain, I'm always angry. And then he slowly turns into the Hulk. That was like the right. last time that we actually saw that. Now, yeah, that's the only time we've seen him actually control it, you know? Yeah. And the, the thing about Jen, though, within that particular scene, the way she brings it up about how she is able to do that, because <clears throat> she makes a statement about women, how they're always mm-hmm. oppressed, they're always being like catcalled, and they're always holding in this anger because men don't... It, no, it's kind of that women's point of view of we take in a lot, but we have to deal with it on a regular, and I understand it, and she's able to contain her anger and be able to control herself and yeah. I, I, I guess that would make her a good lawyer as well because there mm-hmm. was references in the very beginning with her friend saying it's like oh you you make that angry face and then she makes <laughs> yes a, yeah so and there's kind of references towards that because women have to deal with cackles all that and then just kind of move on but hide it down 
So she's yeah. able to control her feelings to a certain degree and, and an element, so that allows her to change at will if need be. But I'm yeah. sure later at, at a certain point, she's going to be to the point where she's going to be like, no, nah, I'll just stay a She-Hulk. And she can I don't know. constantly... I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think I, I, I'm going to say, I think we're going to see her just being being a, a lawyer like at this like in this episode at the end um one of the things i was waiting for i saw i had seen jamila Jamo, uh, J- J- jamila jamil's um name in the credits and i said I, we haven't seen her yet and then she shows up right there at the end as that other that super villain or whoever that was that broke into the courtroom and you see she changes the shekel she does the fight and then she comes back down yeah into and puts her shoes Jim back Walters. on yeah and puts her shoes back on and says, "Okay, I'm ready for my closing arguments." So I, I don't, I don't think we're going to see a point where she's just going to stay permanent. I mean, maybe she will, but I don't see. I, I mean, maybe she will, but I, I think that's just speculation on our part of. of I what think the, it is. I mean, too. We, we got nine, we got nine episodes to go, so they're. Who knows? I'm I'm excited for this series, though. I can't wait to see it. I loved and and the quote you were talking about is uh, she says it's a savage Jen Walters face, and, yes. and her reply is what I don't have a savage Jen Walters face. And the, the uh, Nikki's is like, well, you're doing it right now. So <laughs> I thought that was a great that was a great line. But yeah, this is I'm I'm excited for this. Uh, uh, another great moment for me was that whole fight. When, you know, he says, I didn't want to do this. And they're like punching each other. And she's like showing him that she can fight as well. And then he does his big clap and throws her, you know, halfway across the the field there. And then she like claps once and like nothing happens. And he's like, <laughs> like, and then she starts clapping really fast. And that really fast is what gets him, it gets his head. And so that I just love that whole fight scene between two of them. Because you can see that they're not really trying to hurt each other, but they're trying to show who's the, who's the batter. Hulk. That who's is the true. bigger who's yeah. And they they destroy the bar in the and he's oh, like, yeah. you're fixing this. My you know? bar. So, yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, uh, uh to the one thing that uh we were I was talking about that Bruce was saying to her and how she's triggered and how these happen and how she turns. He goes, The triggers are anger and fear. And she just goes, Those are the baseline of any woman just existing. So yeah. so it's like I almost wrote that line down but I didn't so, so that yeah. was good. So that's 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 the exact quote. Uh the cool thing too about that bar Tony apparently Tony Stark and Bruce did that and he says well Tony was drinking more than he was helping but yeah. you could see their initials carved in there and it was something that you know Bruce loved because it was something that he held on to. Uh the cool part is is that you know his arm is healed now obviously you talked about that. I mm-hmm. thought that was pretty cool. And now we don't have to see a because I thought for a long time we're gonna get stuck with a Hulk with bad arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought that was great. Um that the whole reference to this is where I spent most of the blip. He talks about those five years of the blip. He said, I spent most of the blip here and Tony was with me. And that was one of the things that I think is really cool when you look back on the Tony Stark character is even with Captain America, he had these one-on-ones with, with people. Yes. That Thor, that were Cap. with Thor. Yeah. With Captain America, with Spider-Man, with Spider-Man. He had these one-on-one relationships with them. That is what made him such a special character, and I, I, I reflected on that in the second viewing of this of this episode of of how much we're going to miss that those one on one conversations that we we got to see. So, uh, I thought I, I just love the idea that they use something, especially with the transformations. They talk about it because it is Disney. The you know Bruce goes. These transformations are triggered by distressing emotional states, so we need to know the exact threshold that causes it for you. She goes, oh, put on a Pixar movie when Bing Bong jumps out of the wagon in Inside Out. And they're like, oh, no, 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 not Bing Bong. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But That's great. I thought that was pretty um, cool, and they got those in there. Uh, yeah. And then we, we could talk about the fight scene, too, because it kind of erupts to that point because she wants to leave to go back to her real world. Mm-hmm. And that fight scene was just what we've been waiting for that whole time. Mind you, the the training montage was pretty cool, especially when you know you had that kind of sibling rivalry, uh, rivalry or the relative rivalry, as it were, because they're both cousins. Yeah. When he, he, she does something and he gets ticked off and he kind of pushes off her over the ledge and gives him the finger as she's falling down. So we got yeah. a little bit yeah. of that adult humor in there. 
now I'm he throws her over the cliff and she jumps, she jumps back up yep. and, and she says something like dick move or something yep. like that. Uh, and that, that foreshadows because then at the end, when she pushes him into the boulders and all the boulders fall down, he's like dick move. And she's like, I learned from the best or I learned from you or something, yep. something like that. So we got that callback later in the episode it was really great during the fight. Yeah. And uh, I love the fact that they could drink with all they want without having get drunk without getting drunk. Well, yeah. it's like a, a, it's like a steady buzz, but she turns yeah. back to human form and then she's there in the morning and she's got a massive hangover headache. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She says, I still have to deal with the hangover. Yeah. And I've got some more on that later when the, when we go to the cut to the end credit scene. So yeah, I, there's, uh, I'm trying to see what else I've got in my notes here. The, the, oh, sorry, so the, the, the three breaking of the fourth wall moments we had here was we had, uh, you know, in the beginning, where she's introing the show and she's, and I love that whole thing about where she says that she's a Hulk and, and she goes, okay. And obviously you're going to be thinking entirely about that during this lawyer show. So we're going to have to deal with that first. And then we cut to, like you said, the origin story. And then in the middle of the origin story, when he says, okay, you can go back. They, she looks at the camera and she says, he doesn't mean that. And then you see him look at the camera what? as well, which I thought was cool was that he kind of broke the fourth. He watched her break the fourth. Yeah. Wall and he was, he followed through because he got mad at her for what she said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the moment. And then at the end, when she's, when she's concluding the, that part of the show, she says it again. She says, lawyer show, which I just love that, that she, she wants this, you know, she wants this normal life. She wants this to be a lawyer show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a superhero show, and so it's it's going to be exciting to see how that progresses and those moments that we get. I you know I hope they don't overdo them, but at the same time, I think we had just the right amount in this episode to introduce us to kind of what it's going to be. Kind of like with Deadpool, like he doesn't do it through the whole movie; he does it like certain points in the movie. He'll look at and and then we won't see it for a long time, you know. So I, I really like that that moment of that, and, and like you said, I'm I'm. Kind of excited. I wonder if we're going to see some of those things about bringing the writers in, because uh, like that was what uh, you talked about and what Penny and Greg talked about is that there were a few times in the comics when she would look at a panel and she goes, "Oh no, I don't like the way this is going. I'm going to go talk to the writers." And then she like ripped the page apart. Yep. And in the next panel, she'd be talking to the writers. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope we get something like that in this show of of oh no, I'm not going to do this scene like this and. Then, and ever, I hope we get something like it that. Would but be, I don't know it if would will. be true to the comic if they did something like that. So that, mm -hmm. and it'd be funny if, like, because obviously what they want to do is have these characters in the MCU itself as for movies. So if they do that too, because we, we already have Deadpool doing that in his own movie. Just think mm -hmm. of those two in the same film dealing with the same oh, issues. Man. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't notice. Now, did you pay attention? And I'll have to in the next episode or mm -hmm. the next time I watch this episode, I'll have to pay attention to the Marvel scrawl scroll uh, at the beginning to see if they added Miss Marvel to it. Oh, that's a good question. Show. Yeah. Because remember, they did add you. We did see Moon Knight in the Miss Marvel crawl uh of the of the show at the very end of it and then it's also in the love and thunder movie crawl you see moon knight at the end of that yeah that sequence so i wonder if they added ms marvel in there as well i didn't pay enough attention uh the first time the first couple times watching this one to see if she's in there yeah good good catch we we got to check that out and let us know listeners if you find that uh, to top on what you were starting to mention, you were asking, you didn't know who it was that was in the courtroom scene that she had a battle. Mm -hmm. That was Titania. Now, that was okay. our first introduction to her within the MCU itself. Now, in the comic book version where she was first introduced, she was originally created specifically for the original Secret Wars. And she was introduced in Secret Wars issue number three. And that came out in mm -hmm. July 1984. And I remember that because they had Volcana. And you had Titania, and these were two average women, but it was at a time when Doom was able to, on the battle world planet that uh, the Beyonder created, was able to give these women who were trapped on battle world with them and give them powers. Now, in this case, apparently Titania has achieved certain powers somehow so i'm sure we're going to get a, a background for the mcu or the marvel uh or disney plus show version of her so i'm curious because all we did was get a quick introduction you saw that she was able to battle it out with uh jen mm -hmm. as she was she hulk so i'm, yeah, I'm curious jen took care of her pretty pretty handily though so it's it's uh i hope we get some more of her i'm sure we she's do a, she's, she's very strong actress. that her character is very like kind of like strong she had extra okay. strength very much like uh hulk and she hulk and in that case but okay. 
uh, she had strong body, like a uh, strong body where she couldn't get pierced or mm. cut. So okay. that that's her power structure. But mm. uh, it, it was kind of like a bit of a tease in this one. But I really do enjoy it. And I'm curious to see the uh, what we get out of her later on. Uh, yeah. But uh to to touch on something else, which I thought was pretty cool, how she was arguing with Bruce throughout the the episode about going back to work, and she goes, "You can make me that 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 thing that keeps you in human form," and he goes, "That was a prototype dedicated for me. I can't make you something." It's like it was his way of trying to control the issue, but he probably yeah. could have made one for her, but in this case, she doesn't really need it because she could transform at will. Right. Yeah, I love like, it. She ends up not needing yeah, it. Yeah, she doesn't need it, especially when she goes to sleep because she wakes up and he's got the air horn. He goes, oh, you do turn back to Jen and you fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that was cute. I like that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All those little moments between them were, were really, really cool. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, that's all I got as far as points and notes. Yeah, same here. That's all I got when it came to my points and my notes and my, what I liked about the episode. I look forward to whatever we got. Like I said, this episode is only what, 37 minutes mm -hmm. long. Yeah, I've got two quotes I think that I haven't read yet. And that's uh, the one when they're talking, he keeps calling himself smart, smart Hulk. And, and then she calls him smug Hulk. And he says, no, it's smart Hulk. And he and she says, well, it's pretty smart smug to call yourself smart yep i thought that was it that was a good one and then of course i have to add it because i add it to every voice message if it happens she says no a normal amount of rage and so which she said the title of the episode so we got a mic drop but i'm not going to drop my mic because we're recording <laughs> <laughs> um, one that I have would, would be from Bruce saying, who's going to protect the world if it isn't people like us? And then she, Jen just comes back on, are you quoting a comic book right now? So that's kind of <laughs> that breaking the fourth wall too, because they're talking about comics where they came from. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, what else? That's all I got. Oh, well, I, I got one. Okay. Uh, it's, it's Bruce. Uh, no, Jen saying it. Uh, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm, I'm great at controlling my anger. I do it all the time when I'm catcalled in the streets, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. So mm -hmm. that that was the more woman uh, political view that I wanted to bring up because she kind of explains it out there right up front. I, th I thought it was great because we see that at the, at the beginning of the, of the episode when she's practicing her closing argument and the guy keeps saying, well, do you really, I really think it would be better coming from me, this speech. And she's like, no, this is my speech. I'm not giving you my speech yep. to deliver as a closing argument. So I really thought that was one of those moments where she's holding in her anger there. So, Yeah. Uh, the only other one I had was literally, it's like, he goes, who's your best friend? And she mentions uh, Nikki. And she goes, oh, Nikki. No, Spandex is your best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. That was something that came from the trailer, but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's all I got, too, when it comes to the, uh, the episode as far as quotes and uh, notes, and things of that nature. But uh, I think we did cover this for, fairly well and got a lot out of it. Yeah, I'm looking it's forward good, to. It was a good episode. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, the episodes coming up. And since you said it's like nine episodes, oh wow, so it's mm -hmm. longer than what we thought. I hope we get more cameos. Uh, I already we already know about Wong. We already know Abomination showing up. Mm -hmm. There was a hint of something out of Fantastic Four, but uh, those are rumors. So I'm just leaving those as rumors. Well, and like you already said, the, the one the one trailer that I did watch, we did have Daredevil at the end on there, and I think we. Uh, yeah, at the end, I think we are going to get Matt Murdock as a, as a lawyer. We'll see. I'd like to see all that. I'd like to see them interacting in a courtroom somehow. Yes, it would definitely be great because we got a little bit of that of uh, Matt Murdock in uh, Spider-Man's No Way Home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a yeah. little bit of Matt Murdock. We got uh, Charlie Cox back. So I look forward to that as well. Yep. All right. Uh, well, just to give you guys a little bit of information, if you're not completely knowledgeable of She-Hulk and you want to find more... Uh, just look for Comics Explained on YouTube by Rob, and he's got a nice 45-minute talk and explanation of She-Hulk and her history within the comics. Uh, he talks about Dan Slott, John Byrne, all those runs, the Fantastic Four, her interactions with that, and how somewhat they do relate to the show itself and his idea. He kind of put it out literally the day of the, the episode coming out. 
which is pretty cool because it gives those people like kind of like a history lesson of what the show is about before. Uh, and I know that certain press people got the, uh, the episode two or three days before. And unlike the people that went that I know that, that got to go see it uh, at a, like a world premiere, they said, Oh, the effects were terrible. They weren't smooth. Uh, they were terrible. And, now, by the time I think they have been doing it till uh, the to the eleventh hour and getting these these shows up and the effects up and making them look really good, so I think they did smooth out the uh, the effects for the CG, especially on Jen. I didn't have any issues when it when I saw it on uh, promos for uh, Bruce, but mm. I think they really did well. So yeah, all right. So uh, next episode that we'll be covering on She Hulk will be season one, episode two. Not sure of the title, but uh... I do want to recommend one one podcast. We've, we've already kind of talked about it, uh, but I want to push it a little bit harder. To let her go go out there and look for She Hulk Cast, which is on the Podcastica Network. That's Greg, our friend Greg and Penny, uh, doing that podcast. And Penny used to be an attorney, yes. So it, it's going to be kind of cool to hear her perspective on on the show, and especially going forward when we get more courtroom type stuff to. To see that, so I'm I'm excited to hear what Penny has to say about the show. Yeah, I like to get her take on um, how the courtroom procedure goes and uh, how accurate it is in comparison. Now, mind you, some of it might be comic book oriented because they're going to change it. Like I said, there there have been uh, talks about how she would represent super powered people, so it's going to go more or less into more fantasy. But with Titania coming into the courtroom and destroying everything, this particular episode, I was a regular regular jury and regular court case so i'm looking forward to seeing some of that as well yeah all right and uh we didn't get any feedback obviously we didn't post it yet but i guarantee you if by the next uh the episode that we do cover when it comes to she hulk we'll put something out there for you guys to put some sort of feedback down so uh to submit your feedback well we can be heard on a whole different variety of platforms spotify google play apple podcast or whatever podcast player of choice that you actually get to hear us on. Obviously, you're hearing us now. Uh, if ratings or reviews are available, specifically Apple Podcasts, please do so. Uh, we get usually get notified if something's there. Please just give a review if you like what we're doing on those platforms. Absolutely. You can check out our website at panels 2 pixelspodcastcom That's panels 2 pixelspodcastcom Panels to Pixels podcast, all spelled out in words. Uh, you can go to our Facebook group. Like I stated, we will be putting out an image so that you guys could uh, comment below the image so that way you could uh, talk about it. And then all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And we are on Twitter at panels to pixels. That's panels and the number two pixels. Uh, you could email us panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So that's panels to spelled out to you pixels and the number one at gmail. There you could just type out a regular email or if you like, you could just record your voice, send it as an attachment. We'll play it on here and uh, you get to be heard on the podcast. Absolutely. And we are on YouTube at panels to pixels podcast. You can go on there and give us a thumbs up, subscribe to it. It's uh, just basically our image. And so you'll see our podcast art image on there. So again, panels to pixels podcast on YouTube. And we are on Instagram at Panels Two Pixels Podcast, all spelled out. And you can check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend all of them. Will Hill and the Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and there's so many more. Just go to nextlevelradioonline.com and you can check all of them out there. Awesome. And where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I submit voicemails to various uh, podcasts that our friends do and uh, when I can. And so you'll hear me on any uh, usually strange indeed. It's a podcastic one. I try to submit something to Run for Your Lives, which is on the Private Core uh, Entertainment Network. Where they recover, they review movies, and I'll send them a voice message for over the movie that they're covering. So you hear my voice pop up on various podcasts. Uh, you can hear me on the Journal and Cinema podcast, and that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Therein, we cover action, adventure, fantasy, suspense, thriller, movies, anything that gets your adrenaline going. There's going to be a few episodes up, I believe, Predator. Uh, Steve and I are actually going to cover Prey, which is more the, the prequel to Predator, and then eventually we'll get to Predator 2. You could also hear my, our friend Jerry and myself. We cover Planet of the Apes. 
and I believe we're going to be covering Omega Man soon too. So uh, what you have to do is go to PirateCoreEntertainment.com. You can check out all the other podcasts there, including Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, just like Steve was mentioning, uh, Run For Your Lives with Daphne and Paik, uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition with Rob and his co-hosts, as well as Watched It in the 80s with Damien. But uh, there you can find us there. Very cool. Well, thank you for listening. Same podcast, different panel, different pistol. I'm Mark. <laughs> and I'm Steve. <laughs> And this was Panels to Pixel Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Pistol. <laughs> Pistol. Pistol. I can't say that word.